guys and welcome to the 7th Windows Phone tutorial. Um, what I'm going to be showing you today is one of my most favourite things and probably the greatest thing that uh, I think I've learnt when uh, doing Windows Phone which is isolated storage and the reason I like it so much is because it just makes things so much easier and it gives an app a more um, like e it's like makes more ease to use kind of thing and like when you log out the app and you come back to it you can still have some data stored that it can uh, just bring back up for them like when you're going onto an app that you have to log in it drives me crazy every time I have to type in my username um, and on some of them you can even like store username and password so it's, it's awesome um, I'm going to show you how to do that today so I've already started my application and I've called it isolated storage WP um, I've done this because I'm just trying to speed things up and every time we do a tutorial I end up adding a uh, a new app to the list anyway so we're all at the point now where we know how to do that so first thing I'm going to do is remove all this sample code um, and then the most important thing we need to add and this has to be added on each page um, you have to add the isolated storage settings okay so first things type that get a little drop down and using system IO isolated storage now we need to name it so I'm going to call it app settings and then it's going to be equal to the isolated storage settings dot application settings now this line here has to be added on each page for you to actually access the isolated storage just because the, you enter it on this page and then you make a new page you don't have to name it anything differently you can still call it app settings here and it doesn't mean the information is different so when you're inside your application it, you whenever you call app settings um, and the application settings of isolated storage it will always be the same stuff so you don't have to worry about making a new page that's going to be a totally separate set of storage settings it is the same stuff so first thing I'm going to do on this page is I'm going to show you how to save some information so we're going to put a text box down and we're going to call it username box and we're going to empty that out so it's nice and empty obviously um, and then I'm going to put down a button and we're going to call this save button and we're going to call that save and quite simply inside this box here I'm um, not in this box sorry I haven't done the button click um, inside here we're going to put app settings now we only type in app settings because that then refers as you can see it's highlighted itself to the uh, line we did at the top here which we know app settings is the isolated storage settings and it's in the application settings so then we're going to do dot add and we're going to add to the isolated storage whatever is in um, the username box but in order to do that we need to name the setting inside the app settings so I'm going to call it username then we do a comma and then we need to say what this string is actually equal to so we're going to make it whatever's in that box that we put on the main page so once we do that we're then going to want a way of looking at it so we're going to add a text block here and we're going to call this um, load text which is not really that efficient but um, and we're just going to call this empty so that we know when it's not been set and when it has been set so we know the information is changing and we're going to add another button this isn't going to be the most attractive app um, and we're going to call this the load button now what this button is going to do is obviously it's going to load um, so we're going to go ahead and double click on that to get the on click event and then what we're going to do is we'll do um, load text is going to be equal to the application settings and then when you're calling an app setting and you're calling something that's inside the storage we use a square bracket we open up the uh, speech marks and then we type in what we want so we want the username and then I always cast it to two string so when you're setting it you use add and you use little open brackets like curly bracket and then when you're calling something from the app settings you use the square brackets now I don't know how many times I've had people tell me they've got problems with their code and it's because they've used the wrong brackets so that's really important to make sure if anything's going wrong first thing you want to do is check those brackets so we'll run the emulator um, now this will cast errors we are going to get errors here I'm going to deliberately break it to show you where you need to start using extra pieces of code but what would happen if we pressed load right now is it would try and load what's in the app settings but it doesn't exist so if I press load as you can see it's crashed and it's going to take us to the exception now the exception was 
that the given key was not present in the di in the dictionary, and we know it wasn't because we haven't added it yet. At the moment, we're trying to load something that isn't there. So I'll show you how to cover that in a minute. But just for now, I'll show you that it is working by adding my name in here, and clicking save, and then click load. And then when you load, we're loading what's inside the app settings, which was Jamie, which was set by the save button here, which was what was in our username box. So if I change this to Jamie2, what you're going to see is when we try to save it, we're going to get another exception. Now this one is because an item with the same key has already been added. So what I normally do is when you do the save button, you want to do if app settings dot contains and you want to use your open brackets and you're going to want to say what the key string is. So in this case, it's username. Okay, so we're now saying if app settings contains username, then we want to first of all remove the username and then we want to re-add it. But then we need an else statement to say, hey, it's not in there already for when the person first uses that person first uses the app. So if it's not in there in the first place, then we want to add it anyway. So that's that covered, and it's the same for the load button. If we try to load this button without this around it, we need to check that the app settings contains something for it to actually get. So we're going to do contains username. And we'll go ahead and do that. Now we could put a message box on the bottom of this to say there is no entry under this key. Um, what we can do, we need to, em first of all, you can set the emulator to remove the app settings. Um, when you, every time you run it, you can make it uninstall the app and reinstall it. That in effect will take away the application settings. But um, for this, I'm actually just going to uninstall it from the emulator. And the same if you're deploying it to your mobile device in developer mode, just, you know, play it safe. I mean, I've had it go wrong on me sometimes, so just remove it yourself and you can be sure. Um, so now if we try to load, there is no uh, there is no entry under this key. So we didn't crash. The application still functions. And if we enter in Jamie and we click save and then load, we can see that it's loaded. So we didn't get our message box because it contained what we wanted. So if we now change it again to Jamie 2 and click save, we didn't get an error because the first one that ran was this one here, which said, okay, it doesn't contain a username, add a username. So this time when we press save, you're seeing that it's gone, okay, yeah, there is a username in here, remove it, and then re-add it to whatever's in that box. So then when we click load, we get Jamie 2. Now, this might seem a little pointless in the context I've used it, but it honestly is the greatest thing ever. And, you know, you can quote me on that. This is, this is better than sliced bread. I mean, you could have gone ahead and cut that bread yourself. This, this is better than sliced bread. What you need to do is you need to start making apps that involve high scores and localized scores, a bit like um, the Flappy Bird craze that just went by, which drove me nuts. I didn't see the uh, the big deal about it. If anything, I was just getting sick of hearing that stupid coin noise every time someone made it through that damn pipe. Um, enough ranting. That remembered what scores you got. Um, that's all done in a similar way. So on the Windows phones, we have isolated storage, so we have data we can come back to. So you can either use this in a game perspective, where you can store a high score, or you can use it in other perspectives where you want to keep data on a page when a, uh, a user leaves the app and comes back in they can come across their username again or something like that now as far as i know there is no limitation to what goes into the isolated storage so you can just keep adding those keys as much as you want as long as you're not overriding them as such so that's all i got for this um, that is the isolated storage in a nutshell you can now just go crazy and make something amazing with this because it truly is awesome and this is how i built most of my first apps so it's a really useful thing and uh yeah you're gonna love it now i've shown you just don't forget these damn square brackets so many people don't use the square brackets when they're calling the actual app setting to use it if you use those curly bra those like little i don't know semicircle brackets you're not going to get anywhere where you are you're going to go straight down error city and you don't want to be there so that's that um, I am actually going to start doing another um, little su uh, series of tutorials um, and they're going to kind of be like let's build and we're going to build a set application I'm going to think of an app 
that we can go from the beginning all the way to the end throughout the tutorials and it will use a whole range of these skills that I am teaching now so that you can really kind of put them all into play and see where they can all actually work together to make something awesome. So that's the end of this tutorial guys, um, I'll be doing another one soon, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.